Hey everyone. This is the tape and microsound music machine by Make Noise. And it's a slightly modified version that I have built myself over time in a different case that I prefer and with a different output module that I also like better. I just wanted to walk through an instrument that I really enjoy. There's a joy in working with smaller, more focused systems like this one, in which uh, one manufacturer has very intentionally designed modules that work well together, and that's what we've got here. I will say just some housekeeping things. I love these black hole cases. Um, I'll link to them in the description. Please go support Aaron. Um, really wonderful craftsmanship here. And then I also wanted to say I've used these modules for years in different cases. And for whatever reason, I've had really good luck with the row power um, by 4Ms, 4MS, however you say the name of that company, um, as far as the noise floor. A lot of people like to talk and complain about the noise floor, specifically with Mimeophone and Morphogene, and I have certainly run into those issues with these modules um, as well. Um, you know, just to say a thing that people always say, highly dependent on power supply um, and what else you have going on in your case. And then also, um, the latest update to the firmware of Mimeophone really did dramatically lower the noise floor there. But, I mean, use your ears as we walk through, you know, the system today, and you can make your own determination. Don't make a determination based on forum posts or discussion elsewhere. Just listen. This is what the system actually sounds like. So, I want to focus on Morphogene first, because for the way that I use the system, Morphogene is really the, the heart and soul, and the, the soul generator of sound. If you don't know what Morphogene is, it's essentially a, a big tape machine. Um, it's a sampler that gives you control over the playback speed, the size of the slice you're dealing with, where the playhead is in the file. And then you can also like make cuts in the tape and, and cut a big piece of tape into smaller pieces of tape and pick which piece of tape you're navigating between. Um, gene size is basically the the size of the loop that you're listening to. So like as we go clockwise, the size gets smaller. And then as we go counterclockwise, the size gets bigger. You can hear a bigger chunk of the file playing. Like here, you can hear the entire file playing. And it will just start back over when we get to the end. But if we go at noon, it's a much smaller loop. And we can control the start point of where that loop is with slide. I love Morphogene because it lets you explore a tiny passage of music by zooming in or zooming out by playing multiple instances of that loop. By slowing it down. and then playing multiple speeds back across the stereo field. We're speeding it up. It's incredibly flexible. But this video is meant less to be a tutorial and more to be a patch from scratch in which we make a piece of music together and explore functionality as a kind of byproduct. Because at the end of the day, I don't 
care how something works as much as I care about the kind of music I can make with it by learning how to vibe with it. That sentiment may make some of you uncomfortable, but it's served me well in my life. Alright. <laughs> so, first let's go from Morphogene into QPOS, which is the filter in this system. QPOS is not a standard filter. It's highly resonant, or can be. There are a bunch of outpoints. It's a multi-mode filter. And we're going to take the bandpass outputs here. The green zone represents the uh, the actual like natural speed playback speed of this file. We'll start there. I want to listen to a little bit more of the loop than we have here right now. Yeah. The resonance is set to zero right now on QPOS, but if we were to take that up, you can hear what it does. Highly pingable. But that's a different video. I'm going to turn it back down. We'll just dial that in right about there. Now, what we need is uh, a clock to go any further, and we're going to use maths to be our clock. I'm going to set both channels to cycle, um, which is going to you know loop these envelopes both at these outputs here. But what I'm interested in is the end of cycle gate right here, which is going to spit out a gate every time the cycle finishes on this right-hand side channel. Um, let me grab a little molt for us. Yeah, so I've got one of these little handy dandy passive molts and we're going to build a clock to distribute around the system with it. So let's just grab this gate. Stick it in here. And every time we need a pulse signal to sync the rest of the system to, we'll come back to that clock. The first thing we'll send a clock to is Mimeophone, which is the delay module in this system. And we will turn on the skew button, which allows us to give the left and right channel two different delay values. Let me patch this up so that you can hear it. Okay. So if we adjust the rate, you can hear that we've got a slightly different delay time in your left and right ear. And that'll become more apparent as we go. Hear how those relationships are changing? I'll just leave it right here for now. But I like um, engaging that skew function to give some stereo spread. And you can hear already how interesting this patch is. We're not really doing anything, but like it's fun to listen to. 
I would be remiss not to mention how much I love guitars and pianos playing backwards. So when we take this various speed control counterclockwise from noon, the file will be playing backwards at different speeds. Um, so now it's playing backwards at normal speed. Isn't that nice? The other module that we will take this opportunity to clock is Wogglebug, which will be one of our sources for modulation. So now our stepped smooth and woggle outputs, as well as our clock and burst options over here, should be synced to our maths clock. Now what's great about using maths as the clock here is that we can speed everything up really quickly, or slow it back down, and the system will respond in turn. That will become more apparent as we go as well. Um, now, one of the fun options, you know, um, Morphogene lets you set various options on its SD card. There's a text file, and you can edit the text on that text document, and it will uh, affect a bunch of different parameters on Morphogene. One of them is what the clock output does. And I have it set right now to um, stretch the... Uh, the grains essentially like we can clock this input and it will stretch the playback of the grains out to match the clock and it will also move forward one slice you know by one increment um, set by the gene size each time it receives a clock pulse and that's kind of tough to verbalize so I'm going to turn this delay down and I'm going to start clocking it and just let you listen to what it does. So right now we're looping the same piece of audio. Watch what happens when I clock the system. It's stepping through the file. That's interesting enough, but what happens if we slow this clock down? And give it a second to react. We get this really slow, organic forward motion from the file. And this is without modulating anything else on Morphogene. We'll get there. Let's speed this clock back up. We're doing that by adjusting the fall time. Bring our delay back in. And you can hear how pleasing it is to just slowly adjust the cutoff frequency of the filter. So let's give ourselves a nice slow envelope with channel two, the maths. And because there is an attenuverter on this input, go straight in and just dial that in to taste. So this is already very interesting to me. But what if we were to take our file a 
listen to it in normal speed and find some interesting cut points to divide it into multiple different files. Let's just step through the file here. So that note right there seems like a fun place to make a second little tape loop. So we're going to hit the splice button right there. So now we actually have two different pieces of tape, two different files. They're not actually different files, it's like a marker within the same file, but you get what I'm saying. So this is our second half now, and let's keep walking through it. Let's put another cut right here. Another one right here. Okay, zoom back out. And now we have four, let's see, one, two, three, four shorter files that we can switch between. Let's re clock here. And then we've got this other gate, the end of rise gate, on maths. And if we send a pulse into the shift input here, it will switch to the next splice. So this is a very easy way to step through the splices as we go and change which splice we're listening to. I've got another little passive molt here. I'm going to take the Woggle output and use it in a few different places by using the same modulation for multiple parameters, parameters on multiple modules. I kind of feel like it's breathing uh, with the same rhythm. We're going to drop that into slide here so that we're automating the slide knob. And then we're going to take another copy of that modulation. We're going to use it to change zones on Mimeophone. This will adjust how much overall delay time is available to Mimeophone. It can go from a very short delay on this side of the knob to a very long, long, long delay over here. So we're going to allow Wogglebug to step through those different delay times, which you'll see here as this LED changes colors. Alrighty. Then another thing we're going to modulate. is the gene size. So we'll start our modulation kind of counterclockwise for more of the file to play back, bigger genes. We want to sweep that knob about, you know, 90 degrees around the other way. You can hear this patch starting to really come alive. It'd be really musical. I want to try modulating the rate on the Mimeophone. I may not like this. Let's just try it. I 
That's fine. We'll grab another copy of this for the radiate. Which we will send back the other direction. Good. I'm gonna try another crazy thing. There's an envelope follower on Morphogene, and it's sending some control voltage out according to the amplitude of the file. And I want to try using that to modulate the fall time of this envelope, but I may hate it. No, it's cool. It's kind of organic and unpredictable. All right, I want to show you one more thing here. Let's go into reverse. And anytime this LED turns white, we'll be down an octave. So, boom. Now we're one octave down. I love the sound of, of half-speed tape loops, which is essentially what we're doing here. Um, now, back to that text file, that options file. I have set up these morph ratios for this knob. When we get to the far end of the throw, um, it'll start playing the file back all over the stereo field and also at one octave up and one octave down. So we're getting you know, a few grains that are happening like an octave down and then an octave up from where we are right now. I really like that. What's great about steffi stepping through these different buffer lengths is that Mimeophone remembers the information in those longer buffers and is always coming back to it. So it's like a little time machine um, letting you jump back and forth. All right. Grab one more molt. I'm waiting for the arrival of a black uh, <laughs> two HP molt there. Okay, so I want to grab a copy of this first maths envelope. We'll patch it back into where it was, which is cut off. Um, but I want to try, one of the things I like about this board brain um, monitor module is that the, um, the actual output channels had VCAs. So we could control the overall volume of the patch with this envelope, which is being modulated by the envelope follower. And that's really cool. But I wish I could do it before the delay. And actually I can, by going into the little SOS sound on sound input here. So now this envelope is actually controlling the VCA um, here in Morphogy. I mean, it acts like a VCA. It's not actually, it's actually controlling the dry wet control. There's just nothing coming in on the inputs. Um, so it's essentially crossfading between no input and the recorded sound. It's happening before the delay. So I find that using this technique cuts down on a lot of the like overwhelming chatter that can come from a patch like this um, because a patch like this can very quickly feel too busy and overwhelming and this kind of splits the difference nicely
So this is kind of the the base patch um, here. This is one place you can go with the tape and microsound music machine. From here, the game is just actually playing the instrument with your hands. Um, so I guess this is the place where I'm going to say thanks for watching, um, like this video, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll just stop talking and have some fun playing this patch. And you can sit back and listen to it and fold laundry or, or whatever. But thanks for stopping by. Um, we'll do more of these with this system um, because changing the instrument that has been sampled has a dramatic effect on the final material. Okay?